This episode is brought to you by Audible. For a limited time, Amazon Prime members can get three months for the price of one with Audible. Follow the link below to start listening today. On July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin stepped out of the Eagle Lunar Lander module and onto the surface of the moon. A breathless audience watched from Earth as two human beings walked around on a foreign celestial body for the very first time. The Apollo 11 moon landing was a monumental achievement, and was the culmination of years of intense planning and millions of man-hours of labor. It was a pivotal point in human history, and one that deserves commemoration. But today, 50 years later, we still have a portion of the population that doesn't believe it actually happened. Whether they think it was an elaborate hoax by NASA or a fictional film by Stanley Kubrick, these conspiracy theorists are loud, obnoxious, and incredibly ignorant. In this video, we'll catalog a handful of their claims and debunk every one of them. During the late 1960s and in the immediate aftermath of the moon landings, conspiracy theories regarding the event didn't really exist, or at least got very little recognition. It wasn't until the 1970s that conspiratorial thinking started popping up, when a rash of shocking revelations about the US government were made public. The 1971 Pentagon Papers showed that the American people had been repeatedly lied to about the Vietnam War. And in 1976, a House committee concluded that there had been a high likelihood of a conspiracy to kill John F. Kennedy. The trust between the US government and its citizens was shattered. What else has the government been lying about? Conspiratorial thinking exploded across the nation, and has continued to this day, becoming more and more ridiculous with each mutation of the many harebrained notions that infect public discourse. The Earth is flat. Mass shootings are perpetrated by the government. 9-11 was an inside job. The moon landing was shot in a studio. Get it away from me! You're a coward and a liar and a thief! In this episode, we'll just focus on the moon landing. Let's start with one of the more prevalent theories. There are no stars in footage of the moon, so they couldn't really be there. To the average person with no knowledge of how cameras work, this could be kind of convincing. But ask any photographer and they can explain it to you. As it happens, I'm a huge camera nerd, so here's how it works. Imagine trying to take a picture of someone in bright sunlight. In order to capture what's important, the subject of the picture, you would have to close down your aperture to limit the amount of light entering the lens, and raise the shutter speed to ensure that you only expose the sensor, or film as the case may be, to light for a short period of time. This results in a photo that has the subject properly exposed at the expense of the darker areas in the scene. If you wanted to take the same picture at night, you'd do the opposite. Open up the aperture and lower the shutter speed, resulting in a properly exposed subject at the expense of the bright areas in the scene. But what if the subject is brightly lit at night? That's how light works on the moon. There's no atmosphere like we have on Earth to scatter the sunlight, so the surface of the moon is very bright, but the sky is dark. If you wanted to capture the stars in the image as well as the astronauts, you'd have to ask them to stay incredibly still, hold the camera incredibly still, and set a long enough shutter speed to allow the light from the stars to expose the film. If the astronaut moved, the shot would be blurry, and by leaving the shutter open for so long, the astronaut would be way too bright, but you'd see some stars. The most important thing during the moon landing was capturing images of the astronauts working, and that was the trade-off they chose to make. That's just how cameras work. Okay, but what about the flag? It looks like it's moving. This one is just silly. Since there's no breeze on the moon, the flag had to be supported by wires on the inside. Think of it like wire coat hangers in a shirt. The astronauts bent the flimsy wires while planting the flag, and the inertia of twisting the pole into the surface made the fabric ripple as if there was a breeze. Go get a couple coat hangers, a shirt, and a broom and try it yourself. Even if there's no breeze, the shirt will move when you shove it into the ground. But what about the Van Allen belts? Surely no human could pass through these areas of high radiation and live. Radiation sickness occurs when a human body is subjected to between 200 and 1000 rads within a few hours. The crew of the Apollo 11 was in the area for under two hours total, and the spacecraft was insulated enough that the average dose of radiation was just 0.18 rads, basically two chest x-rays. The crew would have had to spend 36 times the duration of their time in the Van Allen belts to even reach the low end of the radiation sickness threshold. To wrap this up, let's talk logistics. Over 410,000 Americans worked on the Apollo program, on behalf of over 20,000 companies, and with family included, numbered over a million people. Out of a million people, there wasn't the slightest hint of any sort of conspiracy. Do you know how hard it is to get five people to keep a secret? A million people over 50 years, and not one shred of evidence of any hoax or conspiracy of any sort. Not to mention the hundreds of reporters eager for a bombshell scoop. You'd have to be a special kind of stupid to believe they were all in on it. Then there are thousands of hours of audio recordings, just mundane technical communications, friendly chatter, and scheduled check-ins. There were over 2,500 hours of Apollo spaceflight, more than 100 full days. Can you imagine anyone scripting all that? Not to mention getting actors convincing enough to deliver the lines with authenticity. 
you can listen to all of the audio online yourself. Then there were the Soviets, engaged in a fierce race to get to the moon first. Do you think the USSR, America's sworn enemy, would have gone along with the hoax? Of course not. They would have gladly revealed that it was a sham. But they didn't. In fact, they didn't even broadcast most of their missions because they knew how serious it was and didn't want to let the public in on the fact that they were losing the race. We brought back rocks from the moon, which have been studied and shared among scientists from all over the world for decades. They've all confirmed the same thing. The rocks are from the moon. Their structure couldn't have formed and lasted on Earth. Three men died in a fire preparing for the mission. Did the US government just execute them for the sake of the hoax? The moon landing conspiracies simply don't hold up to even the smallest amount of scrutiny. The people who hold these beliefs won't be swayed by evidence. They feel special for having some forbidden knowledge. And even if one of their number somehow becomes an astronaut and goes to the moon himself, they'll claim he's in on it too. And so the cycle continues. For those of us who live in the real world, let's celebrate the amazing accomplishments of the Apollo program and look forward to another 50 years of innovation and spaceflight. If you want to learn more about the fantastic adventure of the Apollo program, I highly recommend you check out A Man on the Moon, The Voyages of the Apollo Astronauts on Audible, completely free. It's a fantastic work, and the Apollo astronauts even called it the definitive account of their missions. Listening makes us smarter, more connected people. It makes us better partners, friends, and leaders. And there's no better place to start listening than Audible. Audible members now get more than ever before. Members get to choose three free titles every month, one audiobook plus two Audible originals that you can't hear anywhere else. And if for whatever reason you don't like the audiobook you picked, you can exchange it free of charge, no questions asked. Start listening with a free 30-day trial and your first audiobook plus two Audible originals are free. And for all you Amazon Prime members, for a limited time, you can start an Audible membership and save 66% on your first three months. A total of $30 off. That's like getting three months for the price of one. To start listening today, visit audible.com slash second thought or text second thought to 500 500.